We have 15 minutes for question and answer. First question is for Christian uh, from Marco. You mentioned Stellar is similar, but not quite. How would you capture the qualitative difference? Which properties are guaranteed by asymmetric trust, but not by Stellar, and if, if applicable, vice versa? The simple answer is the following. Asymmetric quorum systems, as we formalize them, uh, when every first person uh, trusts in the same way, every node trusts in the same way, then we get out the corresponding standard Byzantine quorum system. That means we can use exactly the same protocols as with the standard protocol uh, quorum systems, as long as they don't involve too much cryptography, fancy cryptography. Yeah? That's what I showed in the example where it's just uh, the blue condition was re replaced by the red condition. And that means um, a quality that Stellar seems not to have because Stellar protocol apparently is different. And I haven't seen a formalization of how Stellar protocols would reduce to the normal protocols or how the Stellar model would capture the normal protocols, the, the ones that we see for symmetric trust that we have in the textbooks. What if some of the trust assumptions by some nodes don't hold? Yeah, that's an important thing because I, I skipped over the slide. Um, there are typically, traditionally, you, we, we have an assumption in the systems that nodes are either correct or faulty. And if you're not uh, correct, then you're faulty. But in this world now, there is a new shade of being correct, namely you are correct but naive. Yeah? So the correct nodes uh, are distinct, among the correct nodes, we can distinguish wise ones who made the right trust assumptions or chose the correct, chose the, the right friends and naive ones who chose the wrong friends. And protocols cannot guarantee much, unfortunately, for uh, naive processes because they are too easily uh, fooled by the actually faulty processes. This can be qualified very simply, uh, quant uh, expressed very simply in a mathematical structure, whether or not the failure assumption is contained in the failure system that a node makes. What is not the most optimal, but the simplest implement, the uh, simplest to implement out of all Dumbo versions? Well, interesting point, I would like to say that essentially most of the asynchronous protocol are easy to implement in the sense that we don't have any manual timeout, right? Well, except that the, the BDT thing have some timeout. But the, if we really have to compare the simplest one, I think the original, maybe we call Dumbo classic in the CCS last year, gonna be the simplest because structure wise is really just RPC plus composed with uh, caching idols and we be directly like as a black box. So that should be very simple, yeah. How different is Jolteon from the fast hot stuff? And then a follow-up question. Do you think the bit complexity is ditto is high during view change? Um, might need clarification on that, but maybe reducing the block size during view change might help for networks with low bandwidth. So like for fast hot stuff, uh, um, I would say that in general, Jolteon fast hot stuff or the no commit proof is not a very amazing idea. It's basically, taking PBFT and adapting it to hot stuff. So I'm not sure how different it is. I guess there's some difference in uh, how we show the no commit proofs, but I would say that the formalization that Neil showed yesterday basically encompasses every one, all of these three protocols. Now for Dito, like the bit complexity is, if we talk about bit complexity is n squared. So it is the same as Jolteon's. Uh, but I guess I want to stress again the message that Alberto made yesterday that we should not be running consensus on the payload. We shouldn't have blocks where we run consensus. The mempool can send the blocks asynchronously without any timeouts. It's not a hard problem. It doesn't consensus. And we should be running consensus on the metadata. And then the bit complexity might be n squared, but it's metadata, it's kilobytes. Is there a work where trust assumptions for a node or quorum evaluates a predicate over some properties of the node, uh, for example, quorum power greater than uh, expression or quorum age greater than expression? Uh, the asymmetric trust or even uh, the generalized trust, yeah? the general quorum system, uh, whether they can be mapped down to a single number, let's say between zero and one or zero and 100%, yeah? 
And if this were possible, I, I'm, I don't think it's easily possible. <laughs> the single reason is that if it was uh, just so directly expressing what we can express also with the generalized trust, then it could mean, it would mean that uh, we are back to the threshold world where 33% is, uh, is strictly less than one third and 34% and, uh, would already be AF plus one uh, uh, because it corresponds to more than one third of the power, yeah, because you could just, uh, I mean, the normal protocols are expressed in terms of uh, single units or nodes, but they can easily uh, or equivalently be changed to different, uh, uh, different numbers or weights that the nodes have in expressing their votes. And those could change. This is kind of uh, forms of stake based uh, protocols here. So I think that it's an interesting question to think about how these generalized trust assumptions can be made more uh, realistic. Yeah, this is what we are going to, um, uh, what we're currently going to look at also. Yeah. Can trust assumptions be composed by other nodes, uh, maybe on different aspects such as reputation, uptime, et cetera. And uh, the response from Christian is, so far, this is only one trust assumption. All aspects flow into this. When we how how we can recognize that we've spoken the last word on the current BFD consensus developments? <laughs> how do we recognize when this is the, when we have achieved this status? It's not. It cannot be that somebody who writes uh, that somebody writes a paper that takes uh, that where they claim they have it. It has to be some external factor for me. <laughs> how do you say when we reach this state? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, maybe first let me ask you one question. Is there a concrete low bound for, for all the asynchronous protocols, like uh, say rounds, like four rounds, three rounds? Uh, well, that, okay, you're asking a specific technical question. It, it depends on the model. It's made more complex what we, than what we can I can do. chime in. I did something for my PhD. Yeah, I guess at least the first thing we need, we want to match the low bound first, right? Then, the final say, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> no, I mean, to be honest, the, the, the lower bounds didn't usually uh, take into account message complexity, uh, bit complexity, they, they counted number of messages. I'm, I'm pretty sure Marco's PhD was counting number of messages, not bits. Eh? Yes. I'd say my answer is yes. On the one hand, we want to find what's the lower bound and reach it. On the other hand, is when I can give it to a master student and they implement it correctly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's good. If it's not simple, even if it's super fast in theory, no one would. Do it's going to be full of bugs. And well, you know, if it's even if it's complicated, I mean, maybe there's just one or two implementations, and then we have to make sure that somebody maintains them, like OpenSSL. Huh? I, 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 I can I can say where is the end from my perspective when we have it implemented in in some FPGAs as hardware all these protocols you know if you need to fix it you can fix it but then it works you don't think about it you just have a total load of broadcasts as you know when you need it without actually caring about it I think this is where we can stop. In the meantime, we keep getting questions about uh, jobs and, and and grants from protocol apps so I will repost the links uh, in in Slack. Uh, have a look. If you have questions, reach out to us. We're more than happy to, to discuss.